Hello everyone, Trophy100, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a short video on drinking aged wines. So I've had the um, blessing and pleasure to be able to drink many, many uh, wonderful vintages. I've had some great friends and clients that are prepared to share great wines with me. And when I'm talking about aged wines, I'm talking about wines that um, are probably basically older than 2000. So, um, you know, five years, 10 years in the scheme of things. I know that's already a very well aged wine for most people, but I think from a historical perspective in terms of wine, wine takes quite a long time to age. So I would say when I'm talking about aged wine, I'm talking about a, at least a 20 year old wine. So maybe 2003, but that's just a big Ryan numbers. Anything that's before, uh, the year 2000. And so a couple of things I think that will help you to appreciate these wines. Um, first of all, is just to get the mindset correct. Whenever you're drinking a wine of that age, there must be an expectation that there is a likelihood that it will not be good. And that could be um, some factors that are in your control in terms of storage, um, but some factors that are not really in control. You could just get a bad bottle just by luck. It could be corked. And so you have to have that mindset in mind that it is an adventure. And if you open the wine that you have to um, be prepared that there is a likelihood and depending on storage, even if you stored it perfectly, meticulously, um, there is probably, I would say, you know, at least a 10 or 20% chance that this wine might be corked and might not be off. If you've stored it incorrectly, you're more looking towards 50 or 60% chance. And so as long as we have that mindset in mind, if it's not good, you have to be able to pour it out and not be upset about it and sulk about it. And generally speaking, when I'm bringing an older wine, unless I bought a case of the wine and I've had other bottles, which reduces the risk, I think, um, I generally bring a backup bottle just in case. Um, and I've had to use that, I think, in the last little while, uh, probably in the last two years, I've had two cork bottles. So uh, it does happen, it's really disappointing, but um, you have to prepare for that. The second tip I would have is that um, you have to have the right mindset. So with older wines, you're not looking for fruit. So if you're a person that likes fruit forward bold wines um, you can't have it's not that you won't enjoy these wines but don't have that expectation you're not going to be hit with all this ripe fruit you're going to be hit with subtleness and that's why i enjoy older wines because from my perspective i actually like subtlety i don't like wines that are too fruity generally speaking um, but um, you know it, it depends on the occasion sometimes I, I really like bold wines american wines sometimes i really like fruity wines sometimes i like um, very acidic wines or sweet wines depends on the occasion depends on the food um, so you have to have that expectation that what you're going to taste is more um, savory elements by that i mean herbs uh, forest uh, loam um, underbrush uh, wet cement um, oakiness so uh, tar leather so these are not your common descriptors that you see in your wines like uh, strawberries, cherries, blams, uh, cassis, um, blackberries. It's not going to be ripe fruit. And even when you have that fruit, it's generally speaking more dried. And um, again, you can appreciate different things. It's not that you can't, you know, you have to like one or the other. You can appreciate both. And it's just a, in terms of the mindset, if you're looking for a wine uh, with lots of bright fruit and then you open an old wine, you say, well, you'll be disappointed. Whereas if you're looking for more um, subtle notes and not more savory notes, um, I think the expectation you'll be pleasantly surprised and you'll have the mindset in the right way. Likewise, generally these wines are, I wouldn't call them exciting, um, you know, not the same way that a new wine would be. So not like vibrant and exciting, it's more subtle and I think it takes a little bit of a mindset, a relaxed atmosphere. Generally speaking, I think that is a better atmosphere to drink 
um, older wines as compared to let's break open a 86 de Cru at a nightclub that generally speaking because it's such a party atmosphere and then you want to you have to tone yourself down to be subtle right so I, I think generally speaking these go very well with kind of a little bit more um, quieter peaceful environments um, and that's why you see a lot of these wines open at nice restaurants right with a nice celebration very relaxed um, that gets you in the right frame of mind for these bottles of wine one thing that I find a lot of people do is, especially people do, who don't have a lot of experience with older wines, is they generally speaking over air the wines. And um, a lot of this is based on experience, but from my perspective, why I try not to over air a wine is that you can't get it back. So if you don't air a wine enough, we can do lots of things. You can put it in a decanter, you can swirl it to open it up. But once a wine has opened up, you can't really go backwards. And I've made that mistake before. And then you know, you're in a big rush to drink it up because it's like, wow, this is perfect right now. It's gonna be in decline. They generalize too much. So they say, okay, older wine, 82, to 82 Bordeaux, I gotta decant it. 90 uh, Bordeaux or 2000 de Bordeaux, I gotta decant it. My uh, recommendation is that you actually open the bottle, taste it first. The first thing is to taste the wine and see how it's tasting. If you taste it and it tastes tight, very tannic, go ahead and decant it. If it's tasting subtle, don't decant it. And many wines, it depends on, sometimes it depends on the bottle, it also depends on the actual wine. So I wouldn't just go by the vintage, I would go by your personal experience and um, how you drink the wine. And um, to me, that's held me in good stead. Many wines, older wines, I don't decant at all. I actually drink them straight from the bottle or I might decant them quickly and to get rid of the sediment, but I actually don't mind the sediment as much in older wines. Um, it generally doesn't bother me. It's generally, you know, if you've stood up a bottle um, for a while, it generally goes to the bottom. And that's the other thing that I would recommend when you um, have a wine, um, if you've got it in your cellar and it's an older wine, at least have it upright um, and warming at room temperature for a good part of a day, probably 12 hours before you open it. So the sediment will go down to the bottom and you don't have it floating all around in the bottle because if you had it on the side, it's going to be everywhere. And so um, that will reduce the amount of sediment that you have in your glass and will not you will not be required to um, decant um, so again I don't think you need to decant all older wines and it's based on experience and in general the older the wine or the weaker the vintage the less likely I am to try and decant the wine as an example I drank the 86 de Cru Bukuyu, um, um in a previous video I didn't decant that wine at all it was lovely, but I drank it over a couple of days and that gave me the opportunity to drink it over a couple of days. Had I decanted it, but let's say I was a restaurant and decanted it, that might have opened it up too much and that would not allow me to be able to taste it over a couple of days. I might have to finish it that night. So um, sometimes you want that slower um, ability because you might want to taste it a couple of times and prolong the experience. And then my last tip um, on this is really to not get too bothered about ratings um, and the problem with ratings is again as I've said this many times on this um, channel ratings must be in order to be relevant within the last three years any rating that's more than that it really to me is irrelevant and um, I don't really um, Professional ratings to me, especially with older wines, are I don't give as much credence to because there's so much bottle variation. There's so much that could be different from the bottle that the expert or wine critic drank and the bottle that you have. One of the main differences is that generally speaking, they will get wines that are very, very good condition. They'll be drinking with people from the winery at the winery or very good bottles. And even if it's a bad bottle, they'll have the ability to replace it. We as consumers don't have that luxury. And so we just get the bottle we get. And 
in general, uh, a lot of bottles are not as well, um, you know, kept or don't have as good provenance as uh, the bottles that you see that are rated. So don't get too bothered by it. Um, and the other thing is wine ratings, generally speaking, are done on a tasting level, whereas we as consumers drink over a night and the, the, the wine will change. So many um, wines score differently during the night. And I see that very, very much with old wines. If you ask me 10 minutes after I open a wine, it may be an 86 point wine or 87 point wine. If you ask me three hours later, it might be a 95 point wine. And so what I do when I do my ratings is I kind of take an average score over the night of what I feel. And so um, that's really, I want to get around this concept that uh, each wine has one score. Generally speaking, for trophy wines, that's not the case. For value wines, that is the case. They don't really change very much over time. That's not the case with trophy wines or high-end wines. In general, they change quite a bit during the night. And that's one of the beauties and that's why they're expensive. One of the frequent questions people ask me is, I've got this or my family or my father has this stored around. Uh, you know, I haven't, seen, you know, I haven't done anything with it. What do you think the chances are of it that it's going to be good? And my answer is always like, I don't know, uh, but there's only one way to find out and that's to open it. And so um, to me, that's the fun and joy. If it's bad, it's bad. Uh, you know, but wine really is meant for drinking and, you know, if you're just going to keep it as a, just an art piece, you're, it's, you'll never find out. Uh, maybe for some people that's good, but for me, I'd rather just find out. And th there's no time better than the present day in general to open these type of wines that you're not sure about. If you had it lying around, break it open and then you'll learn something about the wine, right? Um, and there's many times that I've thought, well, wine's not going to be good and it's been good. And there's many times that I thought, well, it should be perfect and it hasn't been as good as I thought. So it's very hard to tell. Um, we know that there are certain storage conditions are better than others. Um, you know, these are the regular, you know, put them in a damp place, don't put them in sunlight, uh, put them at the right temperature, a little bit of more humidity. But having said that, um, it's not an exact science. We have no idea why some bottles are great, some bottles are not. Um, the only way to do it is open it. And again, uh, all I would recommend is, you know, have that in mind that it might be a bad bottle. Some bottles that are not stored correctly, probably a higher chance. And if it's not great, then have a second bottle ready to go uh, that you're not disappointed with. And, uh, you know, that's, it, that's life. That's the life of a wine uh, enthusiast that you take the good with the bad and sometimes the bad really isn't that bad it's just a learning experience and very few wines that I have drunk over the years have been so terrible that I can't drink them um, I've been very fortunate about that and generally speaking um, I would be able to identify those wines based on you know their fill, what people tell me about the wine, I uh, would probably say, oh, that's probably not going to be a good wine. Uh, you know, maybe we should just keep it as a art piece on your, um, on your mantle. Um, so, and in that situation, no, if you've got like a 90% chance that it's going to be a bad wine, there's no point in opening it. You might as well keep it as a memory. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about older wines or have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Until next time, happy drinking.